All right, so um, one of the, the last couple of things we'll look at is uh, if you go back to visit site, this is our site. This is the theme that I've been using, 2016. It's like the default WordPress theme. It's functional, but it's not that nice looking. Most of the default WordPress themes, and they're all named by the year, 2015, 2014, <coughs> etc. Most of the themes that come from WordPress by default are very boring to look at. They're very functional and they have the latest technology that built in on the back end and such. But visually on the front end, they're not that nice looking. You witness this, you know, it's gray on gray on dark gray. So we'll talk a little bit about customizing a theme because this can be a very big topic. Um, so I think we touched on it slightly before. We'll look at it again. This is going to require to pull up our sleeves and to do a little bit of editing of code. So we'll look at two different things we need to do to edit our code. Uh, and both, honestly, can be complex. So we're not going to spend a lot of time on this aspect of things because not everyone will want to do this. Uh, but maybe this will get you into the track of wanting to learn more about this. So to customize a WordPress theme, I want to do two things. I want to change the color of this text. <coughs> maybe this text. I want to change the color somehow. So we'll see how to do that. And I also want to change the structure a little bit. I don't like it to say proudly powered by WordPress anymore. I want it to say something else. And I want to change the color of some of this text. So we'll do one first. We'll change the proudly powered by WordPress. That might be the easier way at the moment. The way we do this is we'll go back to the dashboard. Uh, you want to hover over Appearance and select at the bottom Editor. We have the editor, it's under appearance. Click editor. Appearance editor. And what this does then, it pulls back the curtain. <clears throat> it pulls it pulls back the curtain and lets you see behind the scenes. Uh, what's happening behind in, in WordPress. In my case, um, when, I, when I went to the editor here, it says, you're in the 2015 theme, and you're editing the style sheet, something called style.css. And this is hundreds of lines of code here that define the, the look of the site. There's something here that says captions are 100% wide. There's stuff that makes sense, most that doesn't, unless you have experience in coding. There's a wide column that is 7.6923% padding with a background color of FFF, which is white. So this is the full power of WordPress. This is where you can go in and edit so many aspects of the site where they don't give you a button. There's the code. This can be very complex and you could break your site completely. You could go here and say, okay, I don't like the site title being this big. I'm just randomly jumping to places. So I don't like the site title being 22 pixels. Okay, I'm going to change that to, to, to 25 px. That's going to be that's going to be way better. So I'm going to change it and then I'm going to save it and I'm going to, exactly, I'm going to break my site. Whoops, I deleted too much. So good eye there. That was px. And I changed it to X. So that could break my whole site. I'm making 20,000 PX. Yeah. Wow. It'd be something. Something's going to happen. Something that I don't expect. And suddenly my words are going to be bigger than my page. <coughs> so the thing about editing any of this code here is that's what could happen. You could break your whole site. Or just break that little piece. Uh, but it's not that it's one command that is written wrong. I had here one character. I accidentally deleted a P, and that should be PX. Nice. It, it'll break it. Don't worry. It'll break it. So, and if I do update file, there's no undo. There's no revisions, like on posts and pages. This is one of the forgotten parts of WordPress that I hope they address at some point. 
Yes. It's also one other problem. If you ever update your themes, it will overwrite whatever you did. Yes, exactly. So let's make some notes here. Um, pros and cons and cons of editing code. Pro, full control. Con, could break your site. Pro, full control. Con, um, edits uh, don't result exactly how you think. The changes that you're trying to make maybe aren't doing exactly what you thought they would be doing. But pro, full control. Con. Uh, theme updates could wipe out your edits. The default behavior is when you do an update of a theme, it'll give you the latest code, the latest version of the theme. The latest version of the theme is the latest code. That new code is going to take over the code that you changed. So you see here, there could be a lot of cons, different cons for editing your code. But for me, the biggest pro negates all of that. Number one, because I have 15 years experience writing code, I make backups of my uh, sites, and I also use child themes. So child themes is something that we don't quite have time to get into, but make a note. Use child themes to um, keep to protect your edits. So you want to at some point look up child themes. It is a bit of a setup, um, but with a child theme, any edits you make will stay intact because you've edited the child theme, and when the uh, when the update is done, the update is applied to the parent theme. So that code of the parent theme is updated, but your custom code in the child theme is left alone. And you get the benefit of the updates, the security, the features, etc. So knowing this, let's make a change. Um, this style CSS file is basically going to be controlling so style.css edits the the design of the site. So that would be colors, fonts, alignments, design, everything visual. Any other file, such as um, index.php or footer.php or sidebar.php edits the structure of a section. So a website oftentimes has a footer, which is the stuff at the very foot, at the bottom of the website. There's a file that we're going to edit in a moment called footer.php. That's where it's putting the code that says proudly powered by WordPress. It's a structural thing, not, a not really a design thing. It's not about the color or the font that we need to change. We need to change something structurally, like this room here. This room could be a website because the PHP files are the walls and the floor and all of that structure. And the CSS file is the color of the paint or the color of you know, the light bulbs or the position of the of the computers in the room. So I want to knock out that wall to make it to make this room as big as the next room with the next room. That's going to be changing something structural in a PHP file. I just want to change the color of this of the ceiling tiles. Okay, well that's going to be a CSS change. That's the two big things that you would edit in a uh, in a WordPress site usually, the CSS file or the PHP file. 
So we have a file then on the right side it says you're in the template of 2015 and somewhere you should see if you scroll around you should see footer theme footer click on theme footer and now here's the code it's not hundreds of lines of code it's only dozens this time and it all looks like gibberish unless you have experience in HTML but if you look around you'll see a line somewhere that starts off a href blah 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 wordpress blah 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 proudly powered by blah 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 wordpress so all of this stuff makes up the structure of the footer but the very specific thing I want to change it says proudly powered by WordPress. Why is it written that way? Don't worry about it. These are PHP variables and such. Um, short answer is I wanted to say something else or maybe delete it or something. Instead of proudly powered by WordPress, I want to say something like designed by Victor Designs. So I'm going to make sure there's a there's a single quote here. And then my phrase, and then a single quote, and then a comma, single quotes, etc. Within these two single quotes, if I change it to my own phrase, it'll take it. So be careful not to delete the single quote before proudly. I'm going to say designed designed by I'll leave everything else alone which is WordPress single quote single quote WordPress so I'm going to put designed by Victor or your name or anything you want like yes spaces. yes where? This space right here? There's a space, you know, there's no space. Which word? The word WordPress? Was there a space there? No. I, I went undo. No, there's no there's no space there. There's a there's a comma, then a space, then a quote, and then WordPress. Yes. Okay, the copyright symbol, let's say designed by Victor, or let's say copyright, that might be better, copyright I'm going to say copyright, and then the copyright symbol, it's going to be space, ampersand, which is the and symbol, copy, semicolon. That will create the copyright symbol. Copyright, copyright symbol, by Victor, as an example. In the percentage, yes. It's a, I believe it's a variable. Yeah, it's actually the 2015 variable. It's going to input the WordPress over here. Yeah, the 2015 version. No, that doesn't show up. It's going to input this over here. So, so we're focusing those? So we're going we're gonna to leave that alone. The, 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 this is PHP, and I'm not a pro in PHP, but this is still doing HTML. It's mixing the two. That's what makes it even more confusing. That's technically PHP, and that's loading a variable which we're defining over here, which is, in my case, Victor, and this other parameters here, I don't know. But uh, copyright, and then the symbol right here, the copyright symbol, that's HTML. We were not going to see any of this until we save it, and then view the site until we update. But before we update, we still have a chance. If we made a mistake, we can still undo. We can still refresh the screen and lose our changes. Because once we click update and we wrote this wrong, it could break the site. If something breaks here, it'll probably just break the footer at the end of the document.
But I'm saying this is like one of the forgotten areas of WordPress. It gets it really doesn't get any love. There's no undo, there's no revisions. They could program that, I bet. I could they could program revisions into this thing, but it's it's not there. Maybe in the next version of WordPress, version you know 5.0 or something, there will be revisions within your code editor. But I guess it assumes, well, you know what you're doing with code, have at it. One way to kind of be safe with this is, this is what I do. We, we could have done this before I made any of the changes. I could have selected everything and copied it and pasted it somewhere else. You know, I could paste it into Word or Notepad or something. You know, I paste it right here and save that. I'm going to save that somewhere on my desktop temporarily. Make these changes. Whoops, big mistake. Bring my code back from my, no my Notepad back to the editor, update it, and I brought it back. Very cumbersome and annoying. Conceptually easy, but that's what we have to do. Yes? What if they updated the, the theme? Could this possibly break the theme? What we're doing right here shouldn't break anything, but in theory, yes. If they've got some sort of special programming in here, and we changed it, and it broke something, it was expecting a variable, and we changed the variable, it could break it, sure. That's one of the downsides also of editing this code. You have to kind of figure out someone else's code, and that can always be a challenge, especially with no comments. Let's assume this worked. Let's assume that I know what I'm writing here, and that I didn't write anything wrong. Um, if you're confident with it, you can do this. If not, you don't have to do it. But I'm going to click Update File. And then I'm going to Visit Site. Copyright. Copyright by Victor. Yeah. Yeah, so that's a good idea. You could, you could, you know, that's a little meta. That's good. You could go back to your local disk, back to your WAMP folder, back to your WW folder, back to your 2015 folder, content, content folder, and make and go into the theme and copy the whole 2015 theme somewhere safe, in theory, and then bring that back if you make a make a mistake. So great, worked perfectly, right? Kind of. It's still pointing to WordPress.org if you click on it. It's not bad, but it's not good. Um, so you want to just take it up the Maybe, but maybe we want it to link elsewhere. So I'll show I'll show both examples. Okay, so there was a little bit more that I needed to edit. I I have. Uh, this visual part of it, but code-wise, they're still a little bit behind the scenes. So I need to go back to the dashboard. But if you want to use the Jetpack editor, you... The Jetpack editor, I have it active, but it only edits CSS, um, which, which is just... Um, this is the page this PHP one can also edit CSS, but the edit CSS editor from Jetpack is nicer when you edit. Uh, visually, it's nicer when you edit CSS. We'll look at it in a moment. Let's go back to editor, plain old editor. I forgot to say that. If you activated the CSS editor or Jetpack, you have edit CSS and editor. We want to be in the plain editor. And I need to go back. It took me again back to the style file. I want to go back <coughs> to the footer file. Theme footer. So what we did was we changed the line that said copyright by Victor. Above it there's a lot of other code there. Uh, there's a little bit of this code that says a href. That's the code that makes an active link, basically. That's making it so that you click on, the, on that message and it goes to a website. This is a little more complex because we'd have to strip out the beginning part of it and the ending part of it. So instead of it, instead of us taking that away, we'll leave it as an active link. But wait a minute, instead of pointing it over to WordPress.org, why don't we point it to where we want? If you want to 
you look on that previous line, it should be href, php, echo, etc., https, wordpress.org. Change that to whatever web address you want. So again, I'm deleting all of that. And make sure you don't delete anything besides what's in the double quote, in between those two quotes, single quotes, tick marks. And in there, you can put in a valid web address just for fun, point it to Facebook or Twitter or Apple.com or whatever, just point it to write some address there and save it in visit site and you'll see that now your link goes to where you told it to. So I'm putting in a different address other than wordpress.org I need to update the file and visit site. <coughs> so if I visit site, it looks the same. I hover my mouse over it or click, and then the, it's telling me I'm about to click on that and go to my address, vmcinc.net. Click it just to confirm. <coughs> yes, you went off to that site. So we changed a couple of quick little things in a PHP file. We changed something structurally. Yes, this could have big repercussions if we don't do it right. Yes, this is a big can of worms. Let me ask you this, how many of you have a car? How many of you are comfortable popping the hood of the car and getting on in there? That's what, sort of what we're doing here. We pop the hood of WordPress and we're changing our own spark plugs. Um, a lot of us won't do that on our own real car, that's why we send it off to the mechanic. Same thing here. That's why a, a web design company would be hired to edit this. So I want to mention there are many, many sites out there for you to learn code. One of the ones I recommend is w3schools.com. This is a whole free site for you to learn HTML, CSS, PHP, JavaScript, all of this stuff. This is where I can look up. I want to do the copyright symbol, but I also want to do the yen symbol. How do I do that? There's, it's listed in here under the references. I'm going to do the euro symbol. It's going to be listed in here. Uh, so W3Schools and many other websites out there let you learn all of this stuff. This is a big endeavor, and you probably came to this class because you want to sell products, not learn code. That's fine. You can find a perfectly good theme uh, with lots of great customization options and, and work with it and it'll do what you want. But every theme out there is not going to be exactly your vision. I love this theme, but I need that to get changed. And there's no button anywhere that says remove that. So we did it via code. The theme lets me customize a lot of things, but I want to change the color or the size of that. We'll do that in a moment. But it's not letting us, we'll have to do it via code. You don't have to edit any code ever, and you can get a nice looking site. Just browse themes, free or premium. The cool thing about getting a premium theme is that you can often have you can often ask directly or hire the theme developers to actually edit what you need to edit if you get your theme at a reputable place, such as themeforest.net. This is one of many other theme uh, marketplaces, but themeforest.net are thousands of templates here in WordPress being sold for, you know, $10 and up. And buying a premium theme os often also comes with tech support. Like I said, I've been doing this since about the year 2001, <coughs> but sometimes I need to reach out to the theme developer and say, okay, how does this work? I'm trying to get it to do this. Here's my code so far, what am I doing wrong? They said, oh, you forgot to do this. And they, and they helped me fix it. Or 
sometimes they even say, okay, please give me your login information and we'll log in and we'll fix it. Um, which is which is good because if you're on this marketplace, you're pretty legitimate. Um, <clears throat> people can complain, hey, they hacked my site. I gave them access to change the color of my font and now my site is selling spam. Well, people are going to write that stuff here and complain and, and tell the administrators and then they'll shut them down and all that. So this is one of these legitimate places where you could get real people to, to give you real help on the themes. Themeforest.net Well, they claim website templates starting from two dollars. I can find two dollars to make a cool theme. This one about editing the colors and such, um, as we're running out of time, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail. But the way this works is that you have to figure out what piece of the site you need to edit and then you need to edit the CSS of the site. If you don't have edit CSS you want to turn that feature on in Jetpack. This is way better than the plain editor. Edit CSS. What's that? I don't see how to get to the CSS page This is the right place. It is automatically opening a CSS file. If you're in the also, it's a new, a new Yeah, it's a new feature and it's uh it's it's in technically it's gonna create a new CSS file. It's not gonna edit the original style.css. This will super our our changes here will supersede the original changes. So it's, it's not creating a file for me, it's just creating a custom It's just creating a custom CSS file, and this will protect your changes if we do a theme update. So if that's what I'm saying. We want to use the CSS style editor. This one will protect your edits. But you have nothing here to work with, and the reason why then this is a little more complex is we need to figure out what's the code we need to edit to make to change this. Every web browser nowadays has an element inspector. Every web browser lets you kind of like reverse engineer any website, not just your own. So I'm on the I'm on the front page of my site and I see the text, your favorite neighborhood bakery. I'm gonna right click anywhere on that text. I'm gonna right click on the word your. Don't select anything, just right click. Get a bunch of uh, options here and you wanna select inspect. I'm in Chrome, so mine calls it inspect. You might be in Firefox and it calls it something slightly different. But it's usually the last option, inspect. What this does is it opens a screen or a panel on your screen where on the on in my case on the right side it shows me here's all the code of the site and as I hover my mouse over it it highlights it. And then there's a part below here that says here is the style, here is the CSS, here is the the design elements. What you've selected heading 1 right here is governed by the this code, font size 2.6 rem, line height 1.5, etc., margins, etc. So this is complex, uh, but this could be where I go to make these changes. I'll show you what I did, but here I found the right code so I can start to make these changes because I didn't see anywhere in the interface that is letting me change that to pink. And what I'm doing here, if you want to practice this, where you see your code, right, you're seeing that it's highlighting. You want to highlight the piece that you're trying to change, and you want to click it once. 
In my case, it says H1 class entry title. Your favorite neighborhood bakery. And I'm seeing over here also entry title. Entry title. This is the code that governs the look of that entry title. So if you click just somewhere out here after the, the last code, there's font size, line height, margin bottom. If you click somewhere over here on the right side, it opens up and says, okay, what more code do you want? There's a code called color. As you start typing color, it says, do you mean color, color interpolation, counter reset? No, I mean color. I'm going to write color and then press tab. It says, okay, you're about to edit the color of that thing. Pick a color. And all of these colors show up. Dark cyan, crimson, cornflower blue. Let me select cornflower blue. And I'll press enter. Cornflower blue. Click on the text again, and this time I'll delete it. Let's say dark goldenrod. Click it, enter, dark goldenrod. Dodger blue. Someone was a fan. So, color Dodger blue. What we're doing here is we're we're figuring out what piece of the site's code is where I need to edit. And it looks like there's a piece of code called dot entry dash title. And I can write color colon dodger blue. What we're doing here is not editing our actual site. It's like a playground for us to figure out what do we need to edit? Because you can do this to any site, not just your own site. Um, I can go to google.com, I can do the same thing and figure out here what I need to change. And look at that, I just made google.com very cool now. So you can do this to any site, but it's not permanent, or else everyone would be defacing everyone's site. <clears throat> Do you see color and then colon and then an empty space? If you see an empty space, click on the empty space. Next to color, yeah. Well, you type color and then press tab. So let's. Well, you need, to, you need to click here so that it appears, and then you type color. It doesn't appear. You need to type it. Once you type color, then you press tab, and then it should load up all the, all the colors. So let's say crimson is the color that I want. Again, this is not permanent. This is just a, like a scratch pad, uh, temporary. What I need to do is, I need to write this code permanently in my website. Um, in my editor. So here, in the, in the CSS editor, I'm going to go back to the CSS editor. If you didn't find exactly what I'm looking for, don't worry about it. Let's move on here. So guys right there, don't worry about that. Let's go back over here. What we need to do is we need to go back to the CSS editor. <coughs> And in the editor, we're going to type that same code. So if you didn't find it, that's OK. But this is what we're trying to do. Go back to the editor, the CSS edit. We'll type dot entry dash title curly brace. You may never type the curly brace. It's right next to the P. If that's a, there's a square brace and a curly brace, or square bracket, curly bracket. But you have to type sh shift square bracket next to the P and that'll give you your left 
<coughs> curly bracket, you'll press enter two times, and then your right curly bracket. This is the code that I figured out I need to edit. So I will edit it permanently. Right here. We typed color, colon, space, and then whatever color you want. Pink, for example. Blue, purple, dodger blue, semicolon. This is a CSS code. We're saying there is a piece of, a, of our design called entry title. Let's change its color to Dodger Blue or any color else. Pink, purple, yellow, gold, goldenrod, dark goldenrod. There's a whole list right there. There's a whole list over at w3schools.com. And then when you, if you click preview, it should give you a new window and say, and show it to you, there it is. Preview. Changes must be saved or they will be lost. So this is just a preview. <coughs> and um, the reason why this is a little bit better than a, just a plain old editor is because we get that preview. And we get these other options here, and then we get saved. This is going to add on to the existing code. It's not going to replace the existing code. That's why this is safer to use. If you do an update of your theme, it's just, it's just an add-on. It's going to leave alone the existing code, and your update will not affect it. I'll save this style. Visit site. Now I've got a new color there. Is the file saved on um, WordPress.com? No, it's saved in your own site. Somewhere inside of the WP content folder, somewhere. I haven't poked around far enough to find where it is, but it's in your site. So this is a big can of worms. This is this would be like if I had a part three of this class, it would be four weeks nonstop of this. Mm -hmm. Editing code. This is too much. So this is as far as we'll go with this, because this is the this is the advanced stuff. And not everyone wants to do this or needs to do this. You find a cool theme, you activate it, you customize it as they let us inside of customize, great, we've got a good site. Perfectly viable. But if there is no way to change something, Yes, there is. <coughs> There's the editor. So uh, as far as I want to go, because this could be obviously a big brain buster. Yes, this is universal, and so if you've got a child theme, this will still this will still apply. So I think this is a good place to leave the site at the moment. What I would say is if you'd like to get one more practice for duplicator, try to go through the duplicator plugin and make one more backup of the site. Um, if what you are creating here you've liked and you want to take it with you and keep working on it in the future, make a duplicator backup uh, and take it with you my copy in the folder won't stay there forever because I'm going to do a new class, I need to clear out the folder, and that stuff is going to get lost for a new semester. So if you haven't copied what's in the WordPress 1 or WordPress 2 folders, get those items if you'd like them, because they're going to get cleaned out probably in one week or so, so get them before you leave. Yeah. Um, that page that you on right there, where is that at? Okay, I've got it uh, here under your appearance, edit CSS. If you don't have edit CSS, 
you need to activate that on Jetpack. Go back to Jetpack and add, and edit and uh, activate edit custom CSS. And so if we take a moment to step back and see everything we've done in about two months, if you have no experience in WordPress, you've got a pretty good amount now. There's still more to learn, of course. I still need to learn stuff. There's always something new to learn. But if you started with, with relatively nothing, you've gone pretty far. Look around the class about who else has kept coming back and stayed at it and, and learned. And, and notice that um, uh, it, it's doable. It's, it's powerful. We spent the time to create the shop and all of that, but there's a lot of nuances. We spent eight days on this stuff, and we can still spend eight more days on this. But um, this is a good amount. And at the very least, I'm going to say, if what you learned here you thought was good, but you thought it's way too much trouble to hire someone, great, hire someone, but now you have some of the language also. So that when you're working with someone, and they're trying to tell you, we're going to do this and we're going to do that, and you're saying, that doesn't make sense, why aren't you doing it like this? Or why are you trying to sell me on this if I don't need that? So you have some of the lingo to be able to deal with a potential... Uh, you know, contractor for you to do this. And maybe you do this and you figure, I like this, I want to keep learning more and get paid for this, because as I said, I've been doing this for about 15 years, and maybe there's going to be a brand new software in the future that I'll have to learn. Uh, but it's a very cool, valuable skill to know. So that's it for the moment. We'll have a little bit of lab time, final questions and such. Thank you for coming.